A reading from the Gospel of John. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. And Jesus went up the mountain and sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? And he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, Well, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. And now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he'd given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. They filled twelve baskets. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Well, this wonderful story of the feeding of the 5,000, we know it well. It's one of the first stories we learn as children, and we hear it many times in our Christian life. And in some ways, it can start to fall on deaf ears, as some of these most famous gospel stories can. But in this week of Eastertide, as we are continuing to live into what it means to be followers of Christ in the light of the risen Christ, it is a very timely moment for us to hear this story and to hear what it might mean for us in our own day. We notice in this story that, first of all, we do not, while we often say the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 and the miracle of healing, it's important for us to just note that in the Gospel of John, um, these are not known as miracles, they're known as signs. And signs point to something. And so Jesus is doing all of these amazing things, healing the sick, um, raising the people who are dead, and feeding 5,000 people with just a handful of food. These are not only to be regarded in their own right as good things, it was good that the people were fed, but it's also what it shows us about who Jesus is, who God is, and in fact, about who we are and, and what our limitations are and are not. How many times have we been that disciple who looked out and quite rightly read the room and said, there's no way we could get enough, we couldn't buy enough food for these people to have even a morsel. And then another disciple saying, well, we have this, but it's just not enough. It's just not, it's just too meager. What could this do? And Jesus says, stand back and watch me. Give me some room. And then feeds this entire crowd of people. That sign of God's abundance, what God is able to do, the multiplying effect of God's grace, abundance, mercy, and love in this world. God is saying, if you just give me just a little bit to work with, and stand back and leave the rest to me, amazing signs will happen. So for you and me, as we are in this Easter week here, the second week of Easter, I wonder where's the place in your life where you have um, put a fence around what you think God can do in your life, where you've said, well, this needs to happen, but you know, I can look at my resources, I don't have enough, I'm not enough, the people around me aren't enough, um, whatever could we do? If there's something like that that's on your heart and your mind and um, concerning you, it's worth recalling what Jesus showed us in this instance, that even with just a little bit to work with, with which to work, God can and does do um, unpredictable things. Part of it is simply our willingness to admit what it is that, and ask for what we need, and then to give what we have toward that end and to stand back and see what it is that God can do with that. It means being alert and awake and aware 
um, alert to Christ in our world, alert to God in our world, and also to be realistic about our circumstances, but also to be realistic about God and what it is that God can do. And we know that God can do amazing things because God has done them in the past and in fact is doing them in our midst even as we speak. Um, so I hope that you can search your heart and your mind and your life and see if there's any place in it where you've been holding back or afraid to hope or afraid to ask or afraid to pray for something because you've been like that first realistic disciple who said, there's no way this can happen. Um, I'd invite you to join with um, others in taking that hope, that wish, that desire, um, that need, and taking the resources you do have, even if you think they're too meager to matter, and offering those up to God in your life in prayer and standing back and letting God do God's work. May God be with you this week and may God bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.